The Israel-Hamas war continues to grind on. It's been over a month since the deadly attacks by Hamas sparked uh, this conflict. Israel's government has now been going forward with what they call a siege of Gaza, saying they're inside Gaza and they continue to search for those hostages held by Hamas. Airstrikes continue, parts of Gaza reduced to rubble, civilian casualties rising. Civilians also fleeing through what are left of these humanitarian corridors. There's also been fighting in recent days on the northern border with Lebanon. There are ongoing concerns about how this war could still expand or get worse. The United States has been holding the line while also intervening with some airstrikes. And the Biden administration says it stands ready to continue to defend U.S. interests. But the deeper issues here are far far longer in history and in complexity than just the last month. And with that in mind, we want to continue the series of conversations we've had with people with expertise in the region. Yuval Noah Harari is our guest tonight, an acclaimed history professor at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He's the best-selling author of several books, including Sapiens, A History of Humankind, which was cited by Barack Obama as a book worth reading. And he's considered one of the most influential global public intellectuals on matters ranging from how societies evolve to AI to some of the issues we're about to discuss now in his home country. Uh, welcome to The Beat. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, you are known uh, for your approach to history. This is a conflict rooted in history, recent history, uh, the history of the nation state system um, since the British Empire and the Ottoman Empire gave way to countries in, in the region that you're in, um, and a religious history that long predates that. Uh, what do you think yeah. is important for the global uh, community or audience to understand about the history in the, uh, in the conflict right now? Well, the immediate background to this round of violence is that Israel was very, very close to signing a historical peace treaty with Saudi Arabia, which was supposed to normalize relations between Israel and much of the Arab world, and also to restart the peace process with the Palestinians and uh, to include significant concessions, immediate concessions to the Palestinians. This was a major threat to Hamas and to Iran, and this is why they launched the attack on the uh, 7th of October. Uh, the aim of the attack was not just to kill Israeli civilians, it was to foil the Saudi peace deal and to ruin any chance for a peace process going forward. Um, this is why the immediate war aim of Israel is first of all to disarm Hamas, uh, not as revenge for what happened on the 7th of October, but out of realization that there is not going to be any peace in the region as long as Hamas is in a position to again uh, foil, uh, foil such a peace treaty anytime we get close to it. But the, the greater question is about the long-term impact, historical impact. Uh, the Israeli government is less clear on that, but at least from my perspective, an Israeli victory in the war must mean uh, uh, going back to the Saudi peace treaty, to normalization uh, with the Arab world, and a peace process with the Palestinians that will enable Palestinians to live dignified lives in their homeland. If these conditions are not met, then it means Hamas won the war. Hmm. Uh, and you refer to Hamas's geostrategic goals, inclu including scuttling what would have been a potential breakthrough that could benefit both sides. Uh, Hamas is beyond extreme. It has a, a, a sort of genocidal charter. It's killing babies. Um, so I don't want to oversimplify in referring to different extremes. Uh, but yeah. in addition, uh, you and others have talked about some of the mistakes of uh, the Netanyahu government. Uh, Israel yeah. is not a monolith. There are many people inside Israel who feel that there was a type of different extremism there. Um, as someone who studies the breakdown of these uh, paths in history, um, what do you say to people who are so uh, tragically saddened by how the different types of extremism have beget uh, the situation, that the Saudi peace deal you refer to is less likely in the short run because of what Hamas did, that Netanyahu, um, who had stoked so much internal opposition in Israel over some issues unrelated to the conflict, um, yeah. is, is now still, of course, not only in charge, but uh, in, in a sense, empowered to do a, a, many things. Is there any way out of that cycle? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, again, historically, the way out, out of the cycle is not to look for revenge for past injuries, not to use past injuries as an excuse to inflict fresh injuries and not to seek absolute justice. No peace treaty in the, in the whole of human history ever provided absolute justice. Peace mm. is based on compromise. So the way forward is, uh, um, again, to seek to heal past injuries through compromise and not to somehow correct uh, uh, all, all the wrongs of history because this, this will never happen. I'm not sure if Netanyahu or his government are able to, to, to proceed along those lines. Hopefully, I mean, you know, Netanyahu for years have been a very divisive figure within Israeli politics, taking the country towards extremes, making political alliances with uh, uh, um, religious fundamentalists who, who hold messianic worldviews. I think that ideally for uniting the country, he should have left already taken responsibility mm. for the disaster of the October 7th and left. Uh, if he feels that this is impossible, then at least he should have announced that uh, he is taking responsibility for the calamity, that after the war, he will resign and there will be fresh elections in which he doesn't run. This would have assured Israelis yeah. that all the decisions he is taking right now are aimed only for the benefit of the nation and not for his own political uh, 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 interests. Yeah. Um, also, again, looking forward, we need, if, if we want to uh, uh, reach peace and compromise, we need a different coalition governing Israel. Yeah. Understood. Uh, I want to play for you something we heard from the uh, ambassador to the United Nations for the, the, the Palestinian cause. Uh, we've heard from Ahud Barak. We heard from uh, uh, Ayalon, uh, another Israeli government figure. We also heard uh, from Ambassador Obama here and listened to his argument, his cr criticism of what he says Israel has come to represent recently. We have an Israeli government who is choosing to continue on a path that led us nowhere for 75 years. We are saying, let's learn the lessons of the past. We can always justify killing each other by the fact that the other is killing the other and then continue on this path, but that's not good for any of our nations. The right thing is to find a way to make peace. Your response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, the main thing is to look to the future and not to the past, to find a way to make peace. I do think that Israel has little chance but to try and disarm Hamas, and not out of revenge, and not out of collective punishment, but simply out of realization that Hamas is, is committed to the path of violence, said so many times that its aim is the complete destruction of, of Israel. Um, and there won't be peace as long as Hamas has the military capabilities to again and, de and again derail every peace process when it almost reaches uh, a breakthrough. 